Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation and hands-on session. My name is Jesper Hedegaard. I'm part of the STM32 graphics team responsible for TouchDFX. I will guide you through the presentation of today, which is on how to get started using TouchDFX. The agenda for today is a short introduction, a short talk on installation, then some hands-on exercises uh, on getting started and finally we will do some exercises on how to create your own ui application and eventually run it on a board of your own the goal of this workshop is to get you up and running uh, so that you uh, afterwards can do some experiments on how you can use touch effects to do a ui development on on your own uh, when we're done, you'll have the uh, tools installed. Uh, hopefully, you will have that already uh, for you who are participating in this webinar. For you who are following this uh, through a video, uh, you can, of course, pause this uh, presentation and then install the required tools if you do not have them already. Um, then you'll be able to run an example using the simulator. You will be able to flash your evaluation kit, your STM32 evaluation kit, if you got such a one, or else you can use the, the, the simulator for, for running the UI, UI applications. And you will be able to create your own TouchDFX UI application, and you will be able to experiment on this and uh, go even further into all the nice details of TouchDFX. I would strongly suggest that you, after this presentation, go to our uh, documentation website and, uh, and read more about all the topics uh, that we have there and, uh, and familiarize yourself with, uh, with our documentation website. So let me just show you that. We have it here, support.touchdfx.com. Here you'll find everything you need to know on TouchDFX. Uh, we have an introduction here. Uh, with some installation guides and so on. I'll come back to that uh, in a while. <coughs> Good. Uh, one one uh, detail here. So slides in this uh, workshop will have a uh, some links to documentation pages to the relevant documentation pages for that particular slide. So if you see a link in the in the lower right corner, uh, you can uh, follow that one, and uh, it will guide you through uh, to our documentation side. Before continuing with the hands-on part of this presentation, let's have a short look on the main components of a TouchDFX project. So these main components are the components that you need before you have a, a running, uh, running TouchDFX application on your board. So of course you need a, a display board of, of, of some sort. You need some board initialization code which will make the board run. You need a touch the effects abstraction layer that will combine the board uh, code and the touch the effects engine itself. So the touch the effects engine is the framework. And then on, on top of all of that, you need a, a UI application to run. <coughs> so for, for achieving this, we have uh, four main activities paired with these up here. So we have a, sel a hardware selection uh, activity we have a board bring up activity where you write the initialization code we have development of the touch effects abstraction layer and of course we have the ui development uh, activity here which will give us the application in a normal project well this is an iterative uh, process so you will uh, not go from left to right but you will uh, start out having a, an idea starting out from left and work your way to uh, to the right, but, but you can go back and forth, of course. Um, in this workshop, we will focus on the UI application development part here. Uh, for the other components and the other activities, well, uh, since we are using a, uh, a display board, uh, pre-made display board from, from ST and not a custom board, we can uh, rely on application templates in touch the effects will which will supply us the board initialization code and the abstraction layer um, uh, and of course the engine is uh, something that we 
download and, and just have on, on our uh, PC. Uh, so we will have covered all these four uh, just by using TouchDFX and the application template supplied there. Okay, let's have a look at the installation. Uh, as said before, in this workshop we'll focus on UI development, so we will need the following tools. Uh, the TouchDFX Designer, of course, and an IDE for uh, editing our uh, user code. TouchDFX support, Cube IDE, Visual Studio, IR, Kyle, uh, and we could also use uh, text editors like you Notepad++ know, or Emacs or, or whatever. Um, I will be using uh, Visual Studio, by the way. Um, STM32 Cube programmer for flashing our board, so if you have a board uh, you would like to flash, you, you need this. If you're just using the simulator, don't uh, mind this. Uh, we do not focus on the main, uh, on the other main activities in, in TouchDFX as I presented, so we will not be needing uh, CubeMX or uh, the TouchDFX generator. Of course, if you want uh, to experiment on this on your own afterwards, you should you should install these. All of this is uh, mentioned in the documentation, in the installation chapter. Um, for this workshop, uh, it is assumed that you have the necessary tool installed. And as I said before, if you are following this on, on video on YouTube or whatever, uh, afterwards you can, uh, of course, pause it and make sure you have all the needed tools installed. Okay, let's uh, get started then. Um, we have a set of uh, exercises with a lot of steps in them. Uh, the idea is that I will uh, show you uh, the steps uh, and then you'll have some time to try to do the same on your computer and then we'll continue with the next step and so on. Okay, so the first step here is to simply uh, open the designer and get an example up and running on your PC. So, okay, what we'll do is uh, we'll open the designer. I'm using the 4.13 here. Um, you might have a newer one uh, if you're watching this uh, on video, but, but it should be more or less the same. So here we have the opening screen of the designer. We can create a new application. We can name it, we can place it and so on. We can select an application template, which is uh, the, 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 the defining part of the project which will mention where on what board you will be running this, whether it's a, a um, pre-made ST board, whether it's the simulator or maybe it's your own uh, uh, custom board. But for now we'll just use the simulator for this project. The UI template is um, where you can select what UI you will want to start out with. So a blank UI, of course, if you want to start uh, with a fresh UI, uh, or you can select one of the examples we have here. Uh, most examples show one single thing in touch the effects. So for example, the widget animated image uh, or the, the radio button or scroll wheel or whatever. We also have a set of demos that you can run. You can have a look. They are more comprehensive than the examples uh, and of course also more advanced to to understand uh, but for now let's select uh, this animated image example so we have it here you can see this example is for this resolution so uh, that makes sense uh, actually it does support other resolutions as well uh, but let's go with this one we press create and it will create the um, application for us okay so it looks like this that's great. Uh, now we just want to, to get up and running on the simulator so we can press the run simulator button. It will compile and it will uh, execute the, the simulator if uh, compilation is successful, of course. You can follow the, the progress here. So now it's done. So we have it here. Very simple. I can do it like this. And I can stop it again. <coughs> okay, so uh, you can try to to, uh, to do this your own. Is the first two steps here. Uh, if you have more time, you can.
try to experiment uh, a bit on your own uh, and try to, to, to move, move things around and so on. One detail that I missed, it says here in point two and three, is that if you want, uh, when build, building, you can press this detail lock, you can see what it's doing. So it's actually generating some code and compiling it and so on. Very useful. Um, if you press the browse code button, you'll get a uh, file viewer here on uh, placed on on the the project you've created and uh, you can see the files generated and so on we'll come back to that uh, later in later on in one of the later steps okay so uh, try to do this uh, on your own now and uh, we'll continue afterwards Okay, so let's proceed with the next couple of steps. So this is uh, actually doing more or less the same, but at this time we want to uh, not run the simulator, but we want to uh, run it on a board like this. So most of you should have this uh, H7V3 uh, discovery board. Uh, if not, well, then you can uh, continue doing this on the, on the simulator. Yeah. <clears throat> but let me uh, show you how. So what we will do here is, of course, select a, a different application template, create a new project. Uh, step four here will uh, tell us to uh, connect the uh, evaluation kit and uh, flash it and so on. Uh, but let me show you instead. Uh, okay, so here we want a new project. So select new uh, we still want this uh, UI that's good enough for us for this example we press this uh, change here so here we can select uh, among all the application templates available uh, for TouchGFX so a lot of uh, STM uh, evaluation boards here uh, we want the STM 3287B3 this one so uh, here we can read uh, about uh, the details of this application template about the board we can see some pictures and so on but let's uh, select it and then uh, press create so now it'll download the application template and uh, create the project for you based on this so we have the same as we had before, but now as you, we have selected and based our project on an application template that has a target specified, the run target button here is uh, activated. So what we want to do is to connect our board to the PC with a USB cable uh, like this, and then we press uh, run target. Uh, now we can see here it starts yeah, generate some code and it will start compiling using uh, GCC actually um, generating the uh, entire project split splitting it out in an internal and external part so something will go to the internal flash or something will go to the external flash it will use the, um, the um, cube uh, programmer for this uh, to flash the board so now that is invoked and it is flashing it's 100% and now it is uh, running on my uh, board here maybe you can see it okay so that was uh, yeah, step three and four it says here troubleshooting so that is one detail so of course you can also open cube uh, programmer uh, on its own uh, like, uh, like this um, if if you have that running already and that is connected to your board uh, the flashing will fail from within touch the effects designer because you can only have one program having the connection to the board so please uh, if you're using this uh, then disconnect if you want to use the, the designer of course, the designer also, you can also use the cube programmer instead of the designer so you can build your project and then open the, 
the output in the group programmer and flash the board from there if you pr prefer to do that. Okay, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to try this out uh, on your own. Okay, great. So let's continue with the next uh, exercises. So now let's move to creating your own UI application. So for this, we will uh, start a new, uh, create a new uh, application. We will uh, select the blank UI um, as our starting point. We will uh, then insert a box, which is a widget that is a, has a single color. We'll use that as, as the background. Uh, we'll insert a button as well on top. Uh, run the simulator, see that we can press the button, uh, flash the board and run it there and see that we can still uh, flash, uh, or oh, sorry, press the, the button. Okay, so let's do, do that. So first of all, we have the designer here. Uh, let's create a new project. I select uh, again the um, it's 73 right here i'll have the blank ui 24 bit is, uh, is okay and the resolution is fixed it's set to the boss uh, or the display on the boss resolution so that's great yes so now we have a blank um, ui ready to to uh, insert some some widgets so over here in the designer we have the the set of widgets that is uh, directly supported. So if we go to uh, shapes here, we will find a box, double click it, ah, single thing maybe. Uh, we have a box here, we can drag it to resize it. We can go over here, we have the properties of this particular box. We could rename it if we want to. So this is the name that the instance of this box will have in our code. Box one is, is fine for now. Uh, we can select uh, some uh, yeah, blue color. Let's try that. And then we should insert a button as well. So uh, on the top we have a list of various buttons. So we have a normal button here. We have buttons with label and icons and so on. We have radio buttons, toggle buttons. And we have a flex button, which is a f flexible button that can uh, be a combination of a lot of things. So it can have a uh, image or a box as background it can have uh, text and or icons on top and so on but for now we'll just use a, a normal button here um, and place it in the middle so most of the widgets in, in touchfx comes with a predefined style um, so i could select another one here so this is uh, this is a, a different looking uh, button and so on so these are predefined uh, images that is uh, available for you to use typically in a prototyping uh, setup. Uh, in a real uh, project, you will of course normally not use our graphics, so you can specify here. So you can uh, select whatever images you have in, in, in your project, I'll see that later, and use as the released image of the button. And the same goes for the pressed image. So this the button will switch between these when you press it. The size of something like a button is defined by the bitmap. So if you want a different size button, then you will resize your, uh, your bitmap in whatever program you use for handling your graphics. Um, this is simply because we won't, we do not want to do any scaling at runtime because this will uh, take up resources. It's much easier just to draw, draw a, an image uh, without needing to stretch it or anything. So that's a performance, uh, due to performance. Okay, so uh, let's select a, this one here, place it in the middle and uh, try to run the simulator. <clears throat> okay, so it is here, and now you can see I can press the button. Nothing happens, of course, I haven't associated any uh, actions to, to button click yet. We can do the same for 
run target on our builds, compiles, and flash. If we want to, we can follow the progression here. <clears throat> yes, so you can see here the output files are are mentioned here so we have if we go up we, these are the output files of various uh, different uh, output files so the target.hex is is the complete uh, complete uh, compiled project but we also have the the things that go into internal flash and external and the one who, uh, the, the thing goes to external flash uh, as a an output so if we do some manual manual uh, flashing we could select the specific one we want to to uh, to flash but here it is the target hex which uh, is a combined uh, thing okay so uh, now i have it running on my board and uh, yeah i can press the button and it reacts If you want to do, uh, if you have extra time, please you can try to, to add some other widgets, play around with them. Uh, but for now, uh, try this out yourself and see if you can get it uh, running on, on your board. Okay, I think most of you succeeding in doing that, so let's continue with the next step. This is about importing images into our project and use them in a, wi in a widget. So first we'll add a PNG file to our project and then we'll use it in the image widget, which is a simple widget that uh, display an image in our application. Uh, imported images can also be used for uh, things like defining the appearance of uh, a button, just as we saw it has a release and a, a pressed state, uh, which is defined by an image. And when doing it on your own, if you have more time, you can try to play around with it, add new, more images and uh, use them in, in widgets. Okay, so in the designer, we'll go to the image tab up here. It's the image manager, which shows you the images that, sh that you have in your project right now. So we can see the designer has added these uh, two images on its own uh, because we use that for the button. Um, now we want uh, to import an image on our own, so we can uh, do like this, or we can simply uh, locate them in a file manager here and drag and drop them here. So now we have the SD logo in our project. Uh, we can see the size, we can see the location of it, so uh, all our images here goes to the external flash when we compile and link. Um, of course, you should not be adding uh, a lot of images here that you are not using because they will take up uh, space in your uh, flash. So only uh, add the ones that you are actually uh, actually using or intend to use. Okay, so now this has been imported and we can go to our canvas here and locate the image widget at this one. Um, and then we, we see the properties over here. Uh, again, we have some predefined styles if we wanted to, to add some uh, images uh, on our, our, without importing any, but we want to, to add something from our project. So we select project here, and then we select the one we want, which is the ST logo. We place it here. Uh, we can try to compile and run the simulator to see that uh, we actually succeeded. Yes, and you see we have the application here as well. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to try this out on your own. Okay, let's continue to the next step, which is about inspecting the generated code. So here we'll have a look at the code that has been generated when we press run simulator or run target and uh, and see 
how that is structured. Okay, so in our project here, we can press the browse code button here, which will open the TouchDFX part of, uh, of our application. So my application too is the name of our application. So here we have some of the drivers and the embedded project files. So uh, for IR and Kyle, for example, uh, and also the drivers for the board. But in this uh, presentation, we will concentrate on the UI part of it. So if we break this down a bit, then we can see, um, yeah, well, the app here is some uh, so, some uh, code for the, 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 the target as well. So in the asset folder here, which is more interesting for us right now, is the actual assets that has been added to our project. So here we can see our images. So we have the button images and we have the logo that we just added. So that was the um, PNG files. And in here we also have like text, we have the text database and so on. Um, in the generated folder here, we will see that we also have the images, but these are the images in the CPP format. So this is the transformed PNG image into a CPP file, which is compiled and, and linked in our project. So naturally the generated files are, are the ones that are in this generated folder. Here the build is the output of, uh, of our project. So here we will in the binary uh, folder, we can actually see the simulator exe file. So if we press that one, we will have the, uh, the simulator here. So actually you can, you can zip this binary folder and hand it over to someone and he can try out the simulator if he wants. Configuration files here, uh, not of much interest right now. The GUI folder is quite interesting because here we have our uh, our classes that we will actually be changing if we want to add something. So here we can see our screen one, we have a view and a presenter class for those. Uh, if you want to dig more into the architecture of a TouchDFX um, project, then, then I think you should, uh, then you can, can uh, follow some of the other presentations or, or, or read about it in the, in the chapter about UI development in our documentation. Simulator folder is uh, the, here we have the, how to build the simulators. We have the make file for the GCC. We have the project file for uh, Visual Studio, if you want to, to use that. Target, again, uh, and things that has to do with the specific target we have selected. And down here, we have some configuration part and we have the touch the effects file itself, which is the one you should be uh, opening if you want to open or reopen your project in the design. For now, let us uh, have a look at the project. I will open uh, Visual Studio. Of course, you could browse the code in, in whatever editor you want. Um, yeah, I got it here. Um, but yeah, I'll be using uh, Visual Studio for this. So here you can see we have the project file updated already. So we have the generated uh, files in here and I have my screen, and screen one um, here. And um, in screen, screen one, we can see that this is actually where you can add code of your own. So we have the header file here and we have the, um, we have the source file down here. So it is an empty shell more or less. So, so nothing specific added here. We can see that it, it, it inherits from what is called screen one view base, which is a the auto generated counterpart of this view class. Um, so if we look at that one, it is in the, oops, the generated here. So GUI generated screen one 
have the view base here. So here we can see, as it says here, this has been generated by TouchDFX Designer, so do not modify it. This is for the designer to modify. So here we can recognize that we have box one, we have button one and image one. So everything about this one is being set up in the view base class. And if we have a look at the source file here, we can see that the position of the box and so on, the color and so on is, is here and it is being added to the, the canvas of this screen. Um, but as such, you do not need to, to worry about that right now. It is uh, auto-generated and handled by the designer. One thing to notice is that if we uh, jump back to the designer here and let's say that we uh, add a new button here, it is called button two, generate the code or run the simulator uh, or run target. It will update this file and uh, now we see we have a button two here. So you can jump back and forth between code and, and uh, the designer. In the, in the class that you can modify, since it uh, inherits from this uh, class, you can, of course, reference all the widgets in, in, uh, in, this, in this view. Okay, let's uh, delete this button again in general. Okay, I think you should try this out uh, yourself. Take a few minutes to uh, browse the code, open the code and see that you can find these uh, relevant uh, files there. Next step for us is to add an interaction to our project. An interaction is an event that has a trigger and an action. The trigger is, well, triggering their interaction. So when that happens, we will have the action executed. Um, in this case, we'll have the trigger being the button clicked and the action is to move a widget. Uh, you can see the other properties uh, we want to use here. If we jump to the, uh, the project here in the designer, we have a tab over here in the right hand side, interactions. We can add an interaction here. We have the trigger and the action to be specified here. The trigger, in this case, we have button clicked since we have a button on our screen. Uh, so we can select that. We have to uh, select which button we mean, but in this case, we only have one, so it's button one. And the action, here we have a, a set of things we can have as action. In this case, we'll have the uh, move widget. We have to choose which widget we want to move. So let's select the image, so the ST logo. We can specify the position, 0.0, .0 being the upper left corner, so that's okay. We have an easing equation, that is the movement, it's a specification of the movement. It can be linear, it can be um, yeah, a lot of things, a cubic here, we can have ease in and out if we want to. The duration, we can say, 2000 milliseconds, so two seconds. Yeah, that's it. We can give the interaction a name if we want to. Let's try it out, run the simulator. And when we press the button, we should see the ST logo move. Yeah, great. You can try this out on, on your own. Uh, you can play around with some of the settings, the position, the easing, and, and, and so on. The next and final step in this uh, exercise is for us to react to the button click in a different way. Not reacting uh, with the move widget, uh, which is a built-in action in the designer. Uh, here we want to call a new virtual function, so tying an interaction together with execution of user code, so your own code. Um, for this, we'll change the action to call new virtual function. Um, so this is a two slide uh, step. So on the next slide, we can see we what file we need to open and what we need to implement. I'll show you that in a, in a second. 
If you have more time, you can play around with other things. So use the set alpha uh, value maybe um, to change appearance of, of some of the widgets in your application. You can also try out the touch defects on the score printf, which is a, a, um, a debug printer uh, you can use. So it'll print in a, in a shell. Um, very, very useful in when debugging. Okay, but first of all, let's try to change the interaction here. So instead of move widget, I'll now use call new virtual function. So I can name my function or the function that I want to call. I'll call it my function. Press generate code and jump to Visual Studio here. So now if I go into the view base class, remember that is the one that is generated by the designer. It has been updated with a virtual function called my function. <clears throat> so you can see we still have our box one, button one, and image one here, but we now have this my function as well. And as it says here in the comment, uh, we can override it and implement it in our own uh, part of this screen one view. In the header file, I'll add this my function. I'll do the X implementation here. Of course, normally you would use the source file for that, but, but for convenience sake, I'll, I'll do it here. So what should we do? Let's try box one. It has a set color. And well, it also had a get color. So get color plus a random number. So this should set the color to a different color than the one it has. Uh, I also need to inform TouchDFX, the framework, that this widget has changed, so I want to invalidate it, meaning that the framework will redraw this one next time. I compile. And I uh, run. So here's the simulator. I can press here and we see the background is changing. I can actually also set up a breakpoint here in Visual Studio and we hit that one. So easy to debug as well. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. So try this out. You'll see the, the example of the code here on the on the second slide for this task this step uh, and play, uh, try to play around with it if you if you got the time okay this concludes this webinar on how to get started doing ui application development in touch tfx hope you had fun and hope you did follow all the steps and you were able to do it on your computer as well as I said earlier on, please keep on reading in the documentation site. Uh, here you'll find a lot of uh, information and next steps on how to improve your skills in TouchDFX. You can follow some of the tutorials. You can read chapters on interesting things. Um, so just uh, keep on. Yeah, that's all for me. And thank you for today. And uh, see you. Bye.